In the third week of October 1970, I was more than ready to have my own phone line installed. I knew that it would be a 599 or LY9 number, and I pretty much figured out that while all phone lines were not the same, the different types tended to stay consistent with the first three digits of the phone number. As I took inventory of what I'd learned about different types of phone lines, it became very clear that the network was more perplexing than I had expected. Neil's phone line, which I hoped my new phone would be the same as, could get the good 660 Hello? and got the original 311. Or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. Hello? You'd always get a burst of dial tone after the first digit you dialed. If you left your phone off the hook, it would go silent like this. So there was no receiver off hook tone, but there was a special dial tone on the 660, which was different from the special dial tone on my parents' 660. My parents' exchange, Lindbrook 3, had the type of 660 that required you to dial the last four digits of your phone number and would not allow talking. And my parents' line went to the new 311, which I had gotten going just a week earlier. Like Uncle Harry's phone line in Atlanta, it would do this all the time. It was very clear that Lindbrook 3, my parents' line, and Neil's, Valley Stream 5, were very different. And yet, when you called them, they rang exactly the same way. <laughs> Meanwhile, Larry's exchange, Franklin 4, was clearly like my parents' and Uncle Harry's in that it did this all the time. But it rang like this. A ring which, when I first heard it, sounded so strange it sort of creeped me out. From Larry's house, 660 required you to dial the last four digits and you couldn't talk on it because it always had a noise. But the noise was the same as Neil's special dial tone, or very close. And Franklin 4, Larry's Exchange, also got the original 311, not the new one. Then, in Larry's general neck of the woods, there was another exchange, 239 or Cedarhurst 9. This exchange had an old-fashioned dial tone. There was a burst of dial tone after you would dial the first digit. And it got the original 311. It also got 660 on three digits, but the special dial tone was actually a beeping signal like this. and nobody was talking on it. Cedarhurst 9, with its old dial tone, reminded me a little bit of the interesting phone lines in Atlanta that I'd tried. But, unlike the Atlanta lines, everything here seemed to go through on 3, 7, or 10 digits. So as far as the way it functioned, CE9 was really more like Neil's exchange. It was not like the exchanges in Atlanta, but it did have the same type of dial tone. It was against this backdrop of having a lot of details that seemed very hard to correlate meaningfully that I was hoping, with my fingers crossed, that by ordering a 599 number, I would get a phone line that was like the one at Neil's house. I recall that when the installer was still there, I picked up the phone just to make sure that I'd gotten the right kind of phone line. And there was that dial tone burst that I'd been waiting for. I think the installer might have wondered why I dialed a 2 and said, far out. But anyway, there I was, able to call 311, the original one, and 660 as much as I wanted. Ironically, this occurred when I had something else to do on my parents' phone line, because the other 311 was still going strong. So for a while there, I was going back and forth between the two. And you know, the funny thing was that since almost nobody who could reach one could also reach the other, it was two completely different sets of people. But there was another person who could reach both, and that was my long-lost friend Dave. Dave was actually one of my earliest friends from nursery school, as it turns out. I'd known him since I was four years old. We'd had a falling out in fourth grade, and though I knew he went to the same high school as I did, I hadn't been speaking to him. Well, he just happened to have a Lindbrook 3 and a Lindbrook 9 number at his house, so he had access to both of the 311s. It was sometime in this fall 1970 period that Dave actually asked me, is that you on the 311s using an amplifier? 
I don't recall how it was that Dave had found out about the three one ones, but now having this interest in common, we started talking again. Now, of course, during the next few weeks, with my phone line installed, and having access to the 660 party line, the original 311, and then my parents' line had the other 311, I was spending a lot of time on the phone. On the original 311, for the most part, I was using an amplifier and being a big shot, albeit in a nerdy 13-year-old sort of way. And one day, somebody said something on 311 about, and I'm quoting, the new party line. The new party line, 212 780 Six two something. Here's what I heard when I tried it. This so-called party line was unlike anything I'd ever heard before. There was no recording, and I could hear everyone very loudly. Every time a new person would connect to the line, there was a very loud and unmistakable sound. Jay! What? I'm getting off. I'm going to get off a little while. Hello? Hello? It had kind of an eerie feeling to it. Not the fact that you could tell when someone got on, but just the noise. And the conversations here were not those of junior high schoolers. I'm going to get off a little while. Hello? Hello? I don't have any gin left. I'll buy, I'll buy a bottle of gin. Some All slow right. gin. I told Mike get him a hand. I did Gordon's. Gordon? He hey, likes wait, Star wait, Hold it, wait a minute. You ain't got no liquor over there? All I have is like a little bit. Well, I'll stop over at Jay's. Yeah. <laughs> Robin got my bottle of J&D. <laughs> you want to know what I got in the liquor cabinet? It was clear to me that this was something that was really special and needed to be sort of respected. And it was just around this time that someone started making some, well, threats against people who would play radios and do other disruptive things on the line. Now, this was my first night. I had not heard any of these people before, and the very fact that somebody was taking a stand against people who would play radios and otherwise mess up the party line sounded like a good idea to me. As this person, who turned out to be named Fred, made his little speech, I was sort of cheering him on. Now, it just so happens that on my very first night of connecting to any party line of this sort, somebody was recording. His recordings are not high quality. But this is the real thing from October 1970.
the number three. You don't know. Two three nine nine eight eight one. This is no longer a bullshit party line. Kind of a likable sort of 60s power to the people sort of bluster, isn't it? It seemed so innocent back then. This was a time, after all, when you could turn on the TV and see a commercial for Lavoris mouthwash, which featured protesters carrying signs that said pucker power. I kid you not. As to how effective this speech was, here's the same line several minutes later. Eric? Yeah. Hi, Eric. How are you? Eric. Okay. Eric. Who's that? Right on. Now on the technical side, in calling this new party line, I had heard a noise as the call was going through. This. Now this was another one of those mysterious clicky sounds. Not the same as the one I got on the time and the 5166 and 7 recordings. But it was the same sound as I had gotten calling 396 in New York City, a telephone company exchange which had a rather interesting recording on its vacant numbers. Two one two three nine six. Learning extension at the Long Island Territory headquarters of the New York Telephone Company. If you are calling from the outside. Please dial 396-5100 for assistance. If you are calling from the inside, please recheck your directory and make your call again. If you wish assistance, please call your operator. If you wish assistance, please call your operator. Working extension at the Long Island Territory headquarters of the New York Telephone Company. If you are calling from the outside... If you're calling from the outside, dial a phone number. If you're calling from the inside, check your directory. Why does it talk that way, and what does it mean by a non-working extension? Now, the 780 party line was different from 311 in that it seemed to matter what specific number you dialed. To reach the 311 party line, you could dial 311 or 777 or any other combination of digits that was a non-working code, and they would all go to the same place all the time. But calling the 780 party line, I would often get this. When this would happen, I found that I could get through by slightly varying the number I dialed. For example, if I called 6266 and got that eerie busy signal, I could try 6265. It seemed as if the last four digits mattered, as if each number could only hold one person. Now that was actually a clue as to the type of equipment being used here. But this early in my phone career, I didn't know what to make of it. Anyway, this so-called party line was such a high-quality conference that it really wasn't appropriate to use an amplifier. All you had to do was use a normal phone and talk normally in a normal tone of voice. But I hadn't realized that yet. What follows is literally my first few minutes on a conference of this sort. And as you can hear here, I'm still acting as if I'm on 311. I got a great number, 212 
You never get a second chance to make a good first impression, and I sure didn't there. Who needs a nerdy kid with an amplifier on a line like this? And the numbers I was giving out were interesting to me at the time, but mostly not to these people who just wanted to get on the phone and talk all the time. The numbers I was referring to, of course, were this. And then there was this rather strange one. Not interesting to Fred, but to me these numbers were kind of fascinating. And speaking of the 9979 numbers, a few weeks earlier at a payphone I had taken a break from calling the party lines and tried dialing numbers close to 9979. I tried, for example, Lindbrook 99970. Not only was that number busy, but it was always busy. Now, that was noteworthy because up until this time, the only way I had known to get a busy signal on purpose was to dial the number you were calling from. But now, with these 9970 numbers, I could get busy signals from other exchanges, which had different busy signals. For example, Franklin 4, Larry's exchange, had kind of a funny sounding busy signal that went kind of like that. So I tried calling Franklin 4 9970. And there it was, the busy signal I'd always thought of as Larry's busy signal. And I hadn't even dialed Larry's number to hear it. Next, of course, I wanted to hear another busy signal which was rather near and dear to me, the one which still contained the old-fashioned dial tone that I'd grown up with but had been retired in 1965. So I decided to call Lindbrook 39970. How about that? It was now possible to hear the busy signal noise from any exchange even if you didn't know someone there whose phone was busy. This was interesting because it enabled me to listen to certain pieces of what made up the network, and each busy tone was unique. Another potential use of these 9970 numbers had to do with the party line, where we would often meet girls who were total strangers. We weren't sure we trusted them, so you might want to give them a phony number that's always busy, so that if they tried it, they wouldn't immediately discover that it was phony. It's too bad to think that way, but kids on the party lines could be pretty vicious with phone numbers. And guess whose fault it would be if my home phone started ringing uncontrollably due to some girl I gave it to on the party line? Well, my parents wouldn't consider that to be her fault, now would they? In any event, that was a cool discovery, and it turned out that 9971 always went to a fast busy signal. 9972 was especially intriguing. It rang twice, and then it sounded as if someone was picking up and hanging up the phone over and over. And finally it ended up with this ticking sound. What on earth could this be about? Am I listening to the master timing system of the central office or something? Now unfortunately for me, I didn't do all the 99s while I was standing at the payphone that day. Just the 997X series. At the end of every call, my dime would return. And this just confirmed in my mind my belief that phone company test numbers were free. There were test numbers that would not have returned my dime, but those were the ones I tried from home. Anyway, now at home I continued the exploration. 
9906 seemed also to have something to do with timing. It would answer right away, and then it would do this. Click, click. About every 10 seconds or so, for as long as you stayed on. Nine nine hundred was the same as nine nine oh six, except it had a loud tone that would click on and off. And so on. These two numbers, O O and O six, were definitely related, but I didn't have any idea what either of them was, so they were just two more things to add to the growing list of telephone mysteries. Nine nine three two caused the ring to trip out very quickly and then you would get silence for the rest of the call. Probably that's what it was for, to make the line go silent. 9901 did reveal one little phone company secret, and that was this. Verifying. Verifying. That's busy number verification, a free service the phone company used to provide where if a number was busy for an extended period of time, you could ask your local operator to have the line checked, and she would call the verification operator. Well, turns out prefix plus 9901 was the way they did that. Verification. And the two operators that usually answered verification were the same two that I usually got dialing zeros and ones after area codes. So I got to know these two operators pretty well. How did you get me? By dialing any prefix in southwestern Nassau County plus 9901, that's how. How did you get this official one? Official one, huh? So that's what you guys call this. Well, it's an official number. Hmm, so the expression official number means the 99 numbers, right? And official one is... 9901, right. I guess I'm supposed to have the operator dial this for me, aren't I? I'm going to hang up and ask the operator to do it. Yikes. Sometimes you felt like the operator was going to jump out of the phone if you weren't careful. We will send a serviceman to your home to rip it out of the wall. <laughs> hey, that's not funny. Well, now that I had these official numbers, I knew that I had the key to, um, well, calling busy number verification without having to hang up and ask the operator to do it. Also, I knew how to get a busy signal anywhere, from anywhere. Wow, I guess. But what was all that other stuff? Ticks and tones that clicked off and on? And then the companion number that had the same clicks and no tone? Not to mention the good old... Yeah, that. Okay, this is ridiculous. I don't know what any of this stuff is called, much less what it does. And so I decided to make another call to an official number, in this case, Official 90, which always rang a telephone inside the telephone company. They'd answer with the name of the building. West Bay. Here is the Bay. Away. And there was always a certain noise in the background of these telephone company places. This, not surprisingly, is the sound of the big machine in the central office that makes all the connections. A type of circuitry known as crossbar. And from talking to the switchman, I found out that there were two types of circuitry being used in my part of Long Island. Now, of course, this perked my ears up right away because I'd already noticed that there were two types of phone lines, and this could be the key. So I started asking about various prefixes. It turned out that Valley Stream 5, which served Neal's house, was on a type of circuitry called Crossbar 1, and Limbrook 3, which served my house, was on Crossbar 5. That explained the difference, all right. 
And as I asked about prefix after prefix, it did turn out that the phone lines that went like this, a burst of dial tone after the digit, were all served by crossbar one switching equipment, at least in Long Island. And the other lines were crossbar five. So crossbar five was the name of the switching equipment that always went right after you dialed a number. Crossbar one didn't click right away when you dialed a local call. However, sometimes phone calls would actually go through faster on crossbar one than on crossbar five, in spite of the fact that crossbar one was an older type of switching equipment. Interesting. I was also told there was another type of switch called electronic, but my part of Long Island didn't have any of that stuff. But wait, maybe that modern sounding thing that served grandma's house in Atlanta was electronic. Probably. Unfortunately, they didn't always tell me the truth. My original call about the various test numbers yielded some phony information. For example, I was told that Official 7-2 was, and I'm quoting, a timing feature. Well, that's a total fabrication. It is not a timing feature. But when he told me that, I believed it because of the... Being 13 and fairly naive, it never occurred to me to present myself as anything other than the curious kid that I was. On one of these conversations with someone in the central office, a guy said to me something like this, well, if you really want a thrill, dial 958. After I hung up with him, I did. Fortunately, I did it from my parents' phone line, too. And what I got was... Five, nine, three, nine, eight, eight, three. My number being read back by another machine that pieced together the digits. This one I had never heard before. And it turned out that you could always find the number you were calling from by dialing 958, at least in the New York area. This has actually been common knowledge for over 30 years, and the last time I checked, 958 was still the code in the New York area. Although the machine that says your number is something digital now. As I said, it's a good thing that I dialed 958 on my parents' phone line that time, because the guy I was talking to was in my central office. Well, he could easily have just listened to the 958 machine to see what number came in right after he gave me the number, making a trace unnecessary. But since the number that came into 958 was my parents' phone number, that phone man didn't get a very interesting phone number to watch, because nobody was playing with my parents' phone anymore thanks to something that had happened in late October, calling the new 311. I'm sorry. We are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. My new party line had been shut down. Meanwhile, on the 780 party line, something unusual was happening. And in fact, I have never seen anything like this, except on this one occasion. is a violation of Bell Telephone Tariff. Violators are subject to suspension or disconnection of service. Apparently the phone company had gotten on to the fact that people were talking on this thing and they were trying to discourage people from using it. Connection to this line is a violation of Bell Telephone Tariff. Violators are subject to suspension or disconnection of service. Hello. Hello. Those phone company men, they really suck, you know? I wonder how they found out about it. Connection to this line is a Violators are subject to suspension or disconnection of service. We got a charge. Okay. You got knocked off? Yeah. Again? Or just got one. Oh. Connection to this line is a violation of Bell Telephone tariffs. Violators are subject to suspension or disconnection of service. Hello? Did you get knocked off? Yeah. Connection to this line is a violation of Bell Telephone tariffs. Violators are subject to suspension or disconnection of service. Well, we have another line in reserve anyway. In what? We have another line in reserve for when this one goes Connection out. to this line is a violation of Bell Telephone tariff. In looking back over these events, it's clear that New York Tell had not yet developed a policy for dealing with this situation, and they were sort of making it up as they went along. So a few days later, callers to 780 got this. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
That tone was recognizable as the same tone as on the 9900 numbers. It made conversation quite difficult, but people were still shouting through it. Finally, a few days later, that tone was so loud and they hooked it up in a certain way that no sound could get through the line at all. And that was the end of the 78062 party line as I had known it. So there was nothing to do but go back to 311 and good old 660. So what was that 780 number anyway? Some sort of a one-time fluke? I'd spent so much time on it that I hadn't gotten around to figuring out what it was. No idea what that is either. Oh well. Hello? And that's how I spent most of the next two weeks, on my phone, talking to junior high schoolers like myself on 311 and 660. But the phone company wasn't through with their make it up as you go along approach to the 780 party line. While it would never be the same, it still ended up opening some doors. Many doors. I'll tell you about that in the next segment. Telephone recordings in this presentation have been reconstructed using events from later times in the 1970s. The 780 conference segments, which were recorded by The Wizard, are from the actual time period. The others are composites from other times, but in each case, using at least one person who was on the line in October of 1970.